the moon was at its zenith, a shadow crept across its surface. Confused children watched the pale circle darken, while their village clanged metal objects, hoping to scare the creature away. The creature was the Philippines' moon-eating dragon, the Bakunawa. And this is Legends from the Pacific. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. This is Legends from the Pacific, episode 53, the Philippines' moon-eating dragon, the Bakunawa. I am Kamuala Kanashiro, a native Hawaiian professional writer, speaker, and Comic-Con panelist with extensive film and television experience. I study mythology, I have encountered unusual things, and I'm a geek. You can support us by getting two or three of your friends to listen to our show. This simple request goes a long way in helping us grow our show. Later in this episode, your featured song and Hawaiian word. But first, the Bakunawa. There's different variations of Bakunawa's name, but it translates to bent snake. The Bakunawa has been described as a massive serpent-like dragon with wings, though some believe it's a sea monster since it lives in the ocean. When the Bakunawa became hungry, it saw the enticing moon looming in the sky. The Bakunawa shot into the heavens and ate the moon. It returned to the depths satisfied, but the moon dissolved in the monster's belly. The Bakunawa became hungry again, saw another moon, and the process repeated. You see, around this time, there were actually seven moons, and each had its own night. After the Bakunawa ate six of them, the Philippines' supreme deity known as Bathala and noise from the Filipinos stopped Bakunawa from eating the last moon. When the Bakunawa returned to its murky depths, Bathala knew the creature would try eating the last moon again. So, the deity planted bamboo force on the moon's surface and hoped the people would scare the Bakunawa away when it returned. You, our faithful listeners, may remember our episode of Rahu, the eclipse-causing demon. Well, it is believed Rahu's story evolved into Bakunawa's story. You see, back in the day, lots of trade occurred between Asia's east coast and neighboring island nations. And one of the closest partnerships occurred between the Philippines and China. Trade encourages migration and influences cultures. So if we look at our China episodes, you'll see the belief that loud noises scare away evil beings. So you combine Rahu's story with Chinese customs and you get the Bakunawa story. But there is another Bakunawa story. The following is Legends from the Pacific Original Story and is based on cultural records. The fierce warrior goddess, Halia, removed her mask and sought her brother, Bulan. She found him in their garden, caressing a flower with his pale fingers. While Bulan could be mistaken for a teenager, he was the god of the moon and possessed a radiant beauty. Halia sensed melancholy and asked what was wrong. Bulan shrugged and said he didn't feel like himself. Halia understood 
her brother went through moods and suggested they go for a walk. Bulan's pale fingers graced another flower. Halia left her brother and hoped he'd feel better soon. Bulan went to a window and gazed down upon Earth. His radiant beauty attracted mermaids. They appeared in the ocean below, calling to the impassive moon god to join them swimming in the vast ocean. Bulan considered their request and descended to the ocean to join the mermaids. The mermaids were thrilled to host the god and were captivated by his incredible beauty. Word of Bulan spread, the disruption woke Bakunawa, who rose from the depths to see what all the noise was about. Bakunawa saw Bulan from a distance, and Bakunawa was taken by the moon god's beauty. Bakunawa donned its most attractive female form to seduce Bulan, for it is said the Bakunawa was a female dragon. The beautiful mermaids vied for Bulan's attention. They asked about his sister, Halia, but quickly shifted to which mermaid Bulan felt was the most attractive. Bulan ignored their jabbering as he floated, gazing at the heavens. Bakunawa arrived. The mermaids parted and bathed Bakunawa with jealous looks, for she was the most stunning of the assembled females. She called to Bulan. Bulan heard Bakunawa, but he was intrigued with seeing the heavens from this perspective. Bakunawa tried again. Bulan didn't respond. Bakunawa splashed Bulan. The god faced the enchanting Bakunawa and asked what she wanted. Bakunawa replied she wanted to be with the god. Bulan smirked and said, I'm not interested. Please leave me alone. I have more important things to consider. Bakunawa's heart broke. Her dreams for a beautiful future shattered, and her hopefulness became anger. The mermaids distanced themselves as Bakunawa shifted into her monstrous form. The creature smiled. Bulan, you will be with me one way or another. The god gave Bakunawa a sideways glance then resumed studying the heavens. Something in the distant sky got Bulan's attention, but his view became the giant serpent's open mouth as Bakunawa ate Bulan. His sister, Halia, stopped tending to her armor. The goddess's eyes dilated. Her brother was in trouble. The mermaid screamed, Several of them shouted for Bakunawa to release him, while others shouted for Halia to save her brother. Halia's ears perked. The goddess equipped herself, donned her mask, and plunged for earth. Bakunawa was completely submerged when Halia splashed down upon it. The impact caused Bakunawa to cough up Bulan. He scanned his underwater surroundings, surfaced, and shot for the heavens. But... Bakunawa's tongue wrapped around the god's foot. The open-mouthed dragon surged from the water with the masked goddess on its back. Bulan struggled breaking free. Bakunawa tried pulling the god into its mouth while Halia pummeled the dragon to the chorus of cheering mermaids. The mermaid sound unfiltered by water pierced Bakunawa's ears. Inundated with sounds, Halia's beating, and the pain caused by Bulan, a tear fell from the dragon's eye as it released the god. The creature endured painful attacks and piercing sounds to watch Bulan return to the heavens. Bakunawa captured the gods every moment as she 
lost sight of Bulan. Bakunawa glared at Halia on its back and dove into the ocean's murky depths. Halia surfaced to cheering mermaids. She ignored them and shot back to her domain. The dripping goddess found her brother in their garden. Bulan's pale fingers caressed a flower. Halia caught her breath. Are you all right? Yes. Bulan approached another flower. He moved to face his sister, but stopped and continued studying the flowers. Halia nodded to her brother's back and left to tend to her equipment. You can enjoy unaired brand new monthly stories exclusively on Patreon, as well as other nifty benefits. So become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon supporter today. Coming up, your featured song and Hawaiian word. Today, Filipinos still make noise during an eclipse to scare away the Bakunawa. The Bakunawa's image is a popular decoration that adorned Filipino sword hilts. The dark spots we see on the moon's surface is believed to be the bamboo forest planted to protect it from the Bakunawa. Also, the Disney movie Raya and the Last Dragon has a water dragon which was inspired by Naga, who also inspired the Bakunawa. But that's a story for another time. Some believe when Christianity arrived in the Philippines, Christians merged their beliefs into the Bakunawa story to gain more converts. Some examples are the seven moons representing the seven days of the week. Also, some records claimed the Bakunawa was believed to live in the underworld and was portrayed to be the devil. Unfortunately, we've seen these Christian influences in our Aswang episodes and caused many cultural stories to be lost. It's my hope our show serves as a storehouse to gather, preserve, and share our precious remaining stories. This is also easier than making a hula. Talk about making an inside reference. I hope all our fans got that. You may have noticed this and our last story involved the moon. Well, I usually try to make our shows follow some kind of theme. Looking back on our catalog, you may be able to see my patterns. This is also to prepare you for the upcoming supermoon eclipse, which will occur on Wednesday, May 26th, 2021. If you're listening after May 26th, 2021, please check when your next eclipse will occur. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating, write a review, and share Legends from the Pacific with your friends and family. I'd really appreciate it. Mahalo to our listeners who wrote in saying they enjoyed my little post-credit portion that occurred after last week's Hawaiian song. I decided to have a little fun and include a very short post-credit bonus as an homage to Marvel Films. Since, to me, last week's team-up between Maui and Pele was like our version of a Marvel team-up. Send me your unusual Pacific encounters and experiences via our website or feedback link in our show notes, and your experience may be shared on a future episode. Don't forget to claim your free, unaired bonus episode, Hawaii's Faceless Ghost, Mujina, by joining our email list. Links can be found on our website and in our show notes, so claim your free episode today. Our theme song is Mystery by Tavana, courtesy of High Sessions. Sound effects are by Sound Effects Factory. Our music coordinator is Matt Duffy, a.k.a. DJ Triple Bypass. Links and show notes can be found on our website, legendsfromthepacific.com including a link to your featured song, which is Lani Kai Moon by Mango Season, courtesy of High Sessions. Legends from the Pacific was written, produced, and edited by me, Kamuela Kanashiro. I also wrote our original stories. 
Your featured Hawaiian word is ho'omaluhia. Ho'omaluhia means protected. An example of ho'omaluhia is endangered species are usually ho'omaluhia from poachers. Once again, ho'omaluhia is Hawaiian for protected. As a side note, the shorter ho'omalu means protect. Thank you once again for listening. Mahalo and a hui ho. You held out your hand and followed you down.